Follow along as we build a fitting tribute to the Land Rover Defender. This series is brought to you by LR Centre Limited and Frost Auto Restorers and SIP Industrial Products. Okay, so I'm just using a bottle of Stop Quick by Swafiga Brake and Clutch Cleaner. This, the, the most important thing about the cleaner you use is that it contains nothing that's going to leave a residue once you finish painting it on. So when this is dried and cured, there's nothing left behind. We can paint almost onto that surface if we wish. Just using the brushes that I showed you last time to agitate the surface, get rid of rust, oil, muck and carbon deposits. And these spray balls are nice because they've got a pretty high pressure nozzle. And it's just a case then of removing all of the oil deposits and stuff that's cured onto the engine and really set on there. And the oil is coming off in rivers, which is great. So then we can just use our brush, agitate any areas like that. And this is uh, the, the first step really in the engine block preparation for painting. We need the surface to be entirely oil and contaminant free. Aluminium areas such as this cast front cover should be treated with POR15 metal prep available from frost.co.uk before painting. We took advantage of the cleaning solution to clean the uh, sump as well at this point. Then we gave it a final blast down with the air gun to ensure everything's dry. We'll use a scotch bright pad just to scuff off the old paint that's there. Now that takes the shine off and we'll promote adhesion. We want to go around the engine block doing that. Once we're satisfied that the engine block is completely clean, we'll set about painting it. I'm putting on a single coat first and I'll let that dry for, I'm just going to leave it overnight. Then when I come back for my second coat, which can be a little heavier than the first one, then I'll leave that again to dry for 24 hours. And then finally the manufacturer of the paint, Paw 15, they recommend that you don't start your engine for six days after you've finished your final coat and that's just to give you a really good curing time. Being careful not to paint in any other bolt holes, not to get drips but to put enough on so that the coat flows out and you can't see your brush marks. It's a really nice enamel to work with this. You can buy it at frost.co.uk for £15 a tin and it's about a pint you get and that should be more than enough to paint an entire engine block. As you can see I've done the other side already and hardly even gone into my paint yet and yes this is the final build colour a pastel green I know it's a very popular colour nowadays but I like it this is ultimately going to be my car that I'm going to keep for quite a while so that's the colour I've gone for I'm using a good quality Harris brush they're a little bit more money but well worth it because your bristles are better made they don't come off as you're painting getting stuck in the paint. They give you a really nice brush free finish and uh, I've just used them because my dad always used them when he was painting and my dad always used them because my granddad he would use them. He worked for a paint manufacturer as a sales representative so he recommended Harris brushes. You can get them from B&Q and stuff, they're not like special but they're just a much nicer brush to work with. And when, you, when you're doing something like this, you know, why give yourself the extra headache of a cheap brush? Here's the finished product. The engine enamel colour we used was Buick Green, as that matched quite closely our pastel green paint. There's a number of different colours available. Check them out on frost.co.uk. Okay, so I'm going to replace the engine mounts and refit those now. This is the old one, and because of the mileage it had covered, I decided to replace them. They're not actually that hard to replace, apparently, these when the vehicle's built up, which is a surprise. But um, a worn one can cause knocking noises. So I decided to replace it with a set of new ones. These are pattern parts. 
really uh, good condition, good quality ones though. Almost exactly like the original, I'd say. So, let's go about fitting those. The manual said it was an M10 bolt, or the parts listing for it did. But the hole, I would say, is an M12. So, make of that what you will. We're talking these bolts to 85 Newton meters. Then dropping on the down pipe heat shield that we shot blasted in our frost shot blasting cabinet and then treated with a high temperature silver spray paint. Engine mounts work by damping jarring movements that could be transferred to the engine or the vibrations that the engine produces from transferring into the vehicle frame or chassis and surrounding fixings using a combination of a thick outer rubber with an inner void and then an independent center bush movements in all directions are greatly reduced finally we're fitting our fuel tank and guard in the TD590 the fuel tank sits between the chassis rails at the rear there's no other fixings of such the tank is held in place by the guard the chassis rails at the side and the bottom of the tub on top of the tank the old one, as you can see, is heavily corroded, so we're upgrading this one with one from Paddock Spares, a heavy-duty galvanised replacement. Fitting it is very simple, we used a trolley jack to lift the guard into place, rather than scrambling around on the floor trying to awkwardly lift it and offer it up all at the same time. This reduces the likelihood of dropping it or it slipping and damaging some of our paintwork. The holes for the bolts on the guard are slotted, which allows some flexibility in fitting and that compensates for Land Rover manufacturing tolerances but these haven't been cleared out fully so you may have to gently file excess galvanized material away to get your bolt to fit. These are M12 fixings. All these bolts had K45 molly grease applied from Gwyn Lewis to prevent future corrosion. The rear cross member has three captive M10 nuts on the underside that also mount the fuel tank guard. I've got to say this fuel tank guard from Paddocks is very good value for money. When I looked it was actually probably the cheapest fuel tank guard made of steel that was galvanised that you could buy. And apart from a little bit of filing which you know you have to expect with galvanised products you didn't really have to do anything it just fit up very nicely. It is so strong I could stand on that, it would take my weight, no problem. It's made out of, again, I think a six mil steel, and it's got really cool rally raid style drill outs. So if you're into that kind of thing. But yeah, really nice product, really well made, and you can find it on the Paddock's website. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Fun Rover TV. You can see our last episode here, and also check us out on funrover.com. We are at Fun Rover on Twitter and Instagram, and we're also on Facebook.